another episode of NBC Journal. This is Lana and the Waste again with you. And of course, Bassam will join us in minutes. But before, let's see what do we have on NBC Journal for tonight. On tonight, actually, we're having uh, a report and on uh, the Zafa that was launched from uh, Al Ibrahim Mosque. Uh, then actually, uh, we have like a new technology that was developed uh, by M MIT. It's going to be like they actually do, they recognize your identity from your heartbeat. Heartbeat, signature, yes. Yeah, we have, yes. um, we have something like that. And of course, we're going to have a trip with Bassam to Sebastia, Sebastia talk about the history and the culture of uh, this city, this great city of Palestine. Yeah, and of course, Vox, uh, sorry, uh, Bassam also went uh, on a tour uh, on campus and uh, he had some interviews for us uh, for this episode. So let's stick around, our dearest viewers. We'll see the briefing news with Bassam and we'll be right back. Thank you, Lana and Awais. A Palestinian child was seriously injured in his head when he was shot by Israeli occupation forces during the weekly anti-settlements protest in the village of Kufur Kaddum near Kalkilia city in the West Bank. According to a study prepared by the Central Bureau of Statistics, half of the Palestinian universities graduates were unemployed in 2018 show study on the gap between education and the labor market distributed showed shocking indicators. Nabil Abu Rudayne, spokesman for President Mahmoud Abbas, said the leadership was completely ready to resume talks with the United States administration if the latter agrees to abide the international peace references. Israeli Navy boats attacked Palestinian fishermen near Rafah in the south of the Gaza Strip, detaining two fishermen and seizing their boat, according to fishermen. Russian President Vladimir Putin told President Mahmoud Abbas during a phone call that economic support may not come as an alternative to a political solution of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. The Palestinian journalist syndicate rejected an invitation by U.S. Special Envoy Jason Greenblatt to Palestinian journalists to visit the White House and meet U.S. officials. Thank you for watching. These are the news for today. Bassam. As Palestinians started launching their wedding parties from Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. the, same th the same thing is happening, is happening. in Hebron mm -hmm. from al Ibrahim Mosque. Mosque as a way of resistance for Palestinians. So do you have anything to say? Uh, well, I mean, I, I watched the interview with the groom and he said that uh, the, he started this initiative uh, like to uh, like to, to strengthen yes. resilience uh, for Palestinians. Also, it's forbidden actually for Palestinians to enter Al Ibrahimi Mosque since the massacre that start that happened in yeah, 25 also, exactly. years ago. Yeah, and also yeah. she said he said that uh, it is a way to say that Al Ibrahim Mosque is uh, Palestinian. So uh, let's, let's watch this. this video graph together about the uh, Ibrahimi Mosque. Stay tuned. <laughs> Sam has finally joined us. I hope you're doing great. I'm yeah. fine. I'm actually very excited for today. Yeah, have you watched, like, uh, you've seen the video graph about the Zafa that happened in the Ibrahimi Mosque? 
I did see it actually. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's I actually heard it from my friends as well. Mm -hmm. Watched it with my family. It's been all over. It's global now. Mm -hmm. It's because we value the Brahimi Mosque as much as we value the Aqsa Mosque. And people have to come to understanding that we value these two the same way. It, the Ibrahim Mosque has been closed for many years now, mm -hmm. and it's been used for for the Israelis for their cultural reason, needs, mm -hmm. religious needs, and other needs, and forbidding the, is the Muslims or the Arabs, let's say, in general, from entering it. So of this course, initiative some, is yeah. actually like uh, to raise awareness on uh, the Ibrahim Mosque. Of course, and of course, uh, this, the Israeli can deny the truth of Palestinians and the identity of Palestinians, and this is the same thing actually that that's happening in London in the Expo for Palestinians. Have you heard of it? Exactly. That's <laughs> very relevant to what we're trying to talk about as well. The Palestine London Expo is something that's been yes. going on for about two years now. Mm -hmm. It happens year after year. And it's, uh, it's participated by a dynamic amount of people, not just Arabs, but people who are for Palestine, that are, support us, that support the, the culture. Yes, like Palestinians, Arab, and European, and also NGO who are friends of Al-Aqsa Mosque, are doing this big expo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, like, uh, there was, like, uh, participants and uh, attendees. Actually, my friend participated uh, in that expo, and she told me about uh, the experience that she had. It was like a simulation about Al-Shifa Hesput. Uh, hospital and where actually mm -hmm. a patient gets uh, diagnosed uh, in the hospital and then uh, they actually uh -huh. yeah, like they tell him I sorry uh, they tell him that it like the uh, we, we can't uh, we can't help you because we don't have supplements on the other hand there's like another doctor uh, next to him yeah it, it basically talks about the struggles that patients face in Gaza and also uh, yeah, there's a model for Alexa Musk have you seen yeah but it? actually I like the the end of the simulation was the fact that uh, like I mean they're comparing it to a UK doctor where I actually get diagnosed yes. and they start having the course yeah, let's for see, uh, let's the see this report together the 2019 Palestine Expo is the biggest Palestine cultural event in Europe. was held this weekend at Olympia, London in the UK. It was organized by British NGO Friends of Al-Aqsa, who work to defend human rights in Palestine. Around 15,000 visitors attended the two-day event, a two-day celebration of Palestinian culture, history and arts. Bal Expo brings a range of immersive and innovative experiences to Olympia, London. Included in this year's Expo were virtual reality tours of occupied Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque and exhibits highlighting the struggles of providing health care under Gaza's 12-year blockade. Discussions were also held about Donald Trump's deal of the century, Gaza's great march of return and Israel's nation-state's law. This is Nurhan Masri, NBC. As much as I value Palestine to my, uh, to my own heart, like very, very, very much, I like to look at it differently as like, I, just don't, don't, I don't value just Aqsa Mosque and the Brahim Mosque. I value the certain details that I see in it around Palestine. Today, this week, I went on a journey. I found an ancient town. Can you guys believe it? An ancient town. Wow. In, an ancient, it's called in, Sebastia. In Sebastia. I mean, yes. like, Sebastia. Yeah, yes. I mean like uh, Palestine, the whole of Palestine is ancient. It's like it is, but yeah. it's just yeah. like Sebastia is different. It's mm -hmm. from the Roman eras, the Iron Age, Roman lots of and history. Roman Greek eras. Yes, it yeah. has like different uh, details that you, you you don't see anywhere. But Actually, I went uh, on Sebastia like yeah. uh, for a hike, but it was at night, so I like I did not see much of the you know the uh, the Roman stuff and everything. But like uh, it was like uh, I mean in the countryside, we're uh, trying to find like some spot like for a view. But uh, Bassam, I would love to uh, ask you about areas in Sebastia. Like we have area C and area B. Did you see I these things? There's a big conflict on that, yes. actually. There, it's like an area C where is the Israelis are very much into that piece of land. They, they're, in, they're too attached to it, just as much as we are, I guess. There are lots mm -hmm. of uh, uh, conflict going, going on between the youth and the Israeli occupation forces, and there's lots of uh, things, the celebrations, they, they do culture needs there, the religious needs, and lots of, lots of different things. So you had a great trip there, and now we will see it together. Stay tuned with us.
are you? I'm fine. How are you? Um, what is this place? It's in Sebastian. It's guest house? Yeah, guest house. Can I have please a cup of, uh, of any drinks you have and a okay. water? Okay. Water. That would be all, thank you. Okay. Hello, NBC World, once again with another episode from Journey Around Palestine with NBC Journal. So today, I've been walking around uh, the Annapolis region. I've came across this ancient town. It's very enchanting and ancient. Uh, I see this manual I just got from uh, one of the waiters around this, around this amazing guest house with amazing details, amazing farming skills, amazing architecture, and the rocks, if you notice, it's like a very, very, very old. Uh, I will, we will gonna be walking around in moments uh, after I finish my uh, cup of juice and have a break because it's been a long walk coming around here. Uh, stay tuned in one moment. <music> So ladies and gentlemen, we found the manager of the Mosaic Guest House. This place is called the Mosaic Guest House. And uh, we were just in luck to find the manager here. Um, uh, what, what, how do you find the place here? Do you like it? Yes, a uh, very good place and a uh, very good idea to make a project, a Mosaic Guest House for the tourists Tourist. in Sebastia. In Why the do tourists come here? Yes, because uh, you are, we are in the Sebastia, and Sebastia is a very important uh, town. It's, our, it's very ancient, right? It's yes, very ancient, and many periods uh, came to Sebastia and stayed in Sebastia. Periods? What kind of periods? A period the like... Roman, uh, Roman eras? Yes, uh, Hellenistic, uh, Roman, Byzantic, Crusader, Ottomanic, That's and amazing. now uh, Islamic uh, people, they are living in Sebastia. That's awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, I wish I have so much more time. Uh, to talk with you about this, but I just need to continue my journey now. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely be back. Definitely. Thank you. Thank right? you. Thank, and you so uh, thank you. Bye. -bye. So what we have just found out is this place town itself was from the Roman eras, the Iron Age, and the Byzantine. Ro uh, era, uh, whereas it was, it said in the, all this I just got from the manual, by the way, so it's not from, I didn't, I didn't just make it up. And I, plus I just met with the manager of the Mosaic Guest House, and so that confirms my knowledge. We're going to be looking for someone right about now to help us with uh, our journey around Sebastia. I think I see one. Hey, how are you doing? Hello, I'm fine. Uh, can I have a moment of your time, please? Okay. How are you doing? How are you? Hey, my name is Bassam. I'm Welcome, going on, Bassam. I'm going on a journey with, around Sebastia. Uh, Welcome to Sebastia. <laughs> thank you, thank you. What's your name? My name is Zaid and I'm from Sebastia. You're from Sebastia? Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. You can, I hope it's not too much to ask if you can help me uh, go on a journey okay, with you. Can you, can you show okay. me around? Yeah, I will show you. Awesome, awesome. So Welcome again. You. Let's go. Now we will go to the mosque of the Sultan Abdul Hamid II. Where? The Sultan Abdul Hamid II? Yeah, the mosque of the Sultan Abdul Hamid II. The mosque of the Sultan Abdul Hamid II. The second, the second yes. Alright, that's the right order? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Whew. 
What is this place? So here we have uh, another archaeological site called Basilica. Basilica? Yeah, Basilica. Uh, what is exact? What exactly is the Basilica? This is the Basilica. This is the Basilica. So what was here? And here and here, what, what, it's all over the place. But it's, what was here? It looks interesting. It was a court. A court. Yeah. So that's where they pass on judgment. Yeah, this <laughs> is the, the place for judgment here. That's what we have for today, folks, for today's uh, journey with Zaid and Uncle Abu Faris. Um, I'm really, I'm actually, I got, I got well, um, well, well, culture, well educated today from Zaid, our, my teacher for today. Uh, I can't believe uh, what's going, what's been on in Palestine here and I haven't heard about it, I haven't been here before. Honestly, I'm actually so very surprised and proud to be here today. Uh, so stay tuned for the next uh, journey with us uh, next week. Hello again and moving to the technological topic according to MIT Technology Review. There is a, a laser that has been developed uh, for the Pentagon. Have you heard of it guys? I heard something very very interesting yeah. about that actually. Other than the audio record, there's a laser record that measures the heartbeat of a human heart. Yeah, true that. And it yeah. draws your faces almost similar to what you look like. So it's based on like uh, the pattern of your heartbeat. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. But like, I mean, it's it's kind of interesting because like I read it somewhere that like the uh, the pattern of your uh, heartbeats actually changed according to the pattern of your uh, thoughts and uh, feelings. The pattern it does, of your but thoughts. But a heartbeat has like its own identification, just like how your own thumb has identification, mm -hmm. just yeah. like how your own voice has its own identification. And uh, I feel bad for the criminals now. They can't do <laughs> anything. <laughs> yeah, true that. It's like also these people with surgeries now can't uh, can't escape from their. Uh, it was actually used yes. as well. Uh, like it was used for something in the more. Uh, a war, a war way. Uh, it was used for ISIS to identify ISIS characters and people in the military mm -hmm. and all sorts of things for uh, the Pentagon. So let's see this uh, report together and we'll be back. The U.S. Special Forces are pursuing a new method of teletargeting using laser to sense the heartbeat. The Pentagon has developed a prototype technology called Jetson which uses infrared laser to read a person's heart rate. Although it's less visible than fingerprints or faces, people's heartbeats are unique, which makes them the most useful biometrics to uniquely identify a person. The difference in one heartbeat is unlike facial differences, which may carry many similar features since the heart rate is quite distinctive. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology said companies like NEMI are already using heart-specific technologies captured by a sensor on a wrist to identify people for security purposes. Using laser makes this discovery the most desirable one for the U.S. military. The current primary models operate from about 200 meters and with further modifications can be extended. The patterns of heartbeat that are collected by detecting changes in the infrared light resulting from the person's blood flow. In addition to its accuracy which reached 95% to 98 it is also versatile. This method requires that an invisible laser be directed to a target for about 30 seconds to get enough reading, which means that the technology can only be used definitively on someone who is still standing. So everybody has their own role model that supports them, inspires them, and their own inspiration that keeps them, keeps them going. Today we have our own inspiration from Al Najah University, Hadil Haddadi. Hi, hi, how are you? Yeah, it's good to Hello. have you here. Thank you so much. It's an honor actually for us to have a great person like you. Thank you so much for so having me. So would you me. please like, uh, like introduce yourself uh, for our audience now? I'm not going to go with ages, okay? okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I uh, actually graduated from uh, Jordan University. Mm -hmm. I did cool. uh, BA in Applied um, Linguistics, Applied English and Linguistics. Then, cool. um, you know, when you graduate, 
um, you come back home, then um, you have that kind of hope that you will find a job in one minute mm -hmm. because you know that you have that you English come with energy. Yeah. You come with energy yeah. back. I would say yes. Oh, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had some experience. Like, um, uh, you know, the school, what school you have to do that, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of extra work. Yeah. So what I did for... Um, to improve my English because this is the main major that I did. Mm -hmm. in, uh, English needs more practical skills. It's practical, yeah. exactly. You yeah. don't get, get it from school, I would say, unfortunately. Uh, so I worked mm. uh, for three months, like summer job mm -hmm. in US, in McDonald's, actually. Wow. That was my first job. Like, yeah. 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 I was that sport girl, then <laughs> I, I moved to US to exactly. work for McDonald's for three months. Then I came back and, the, you know, I have that hope that, yeah, I can do whatever I want. Then I've never heard about public relations before. So someone told me, you want to travel? I was, yeah. There's like, there's a Najah University, you know, you know, you can go there and there's that public relations office. You can travel the world with them. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a Dajjal program. I was like, okay, I'm going to try my, my like, yeah. uh, I give it a shot. So I went there and I told them that I uh, graduated from uh, Jordan University. I have a good English. Okay, I want to work for you. For free. With open arms? For free. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so for free. <laughs> exactly. That was uh, for free. You should put it in there. I actually, I did not mind it that time because I had no experience, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I worked. With actually, thinking. Yeah. So I volunteered for seven months. It was amazing. Seven months mm -hmm. in my life. Wallah. Um, for but free. Of course, mm -hmm. like any experience you do in your life or you've been through in your life mm -hmm. gives you a lot of things and a lot of, uh, maybe it, it shapes your personality in the future, right? Mm -hmm. Somehow, yeah. yeah. It was not easy job. Like you're working for you at US. I worked in McDonald's, as I said before, yes. for seven hours a day or eight hours. Yeah. Then I used to work also at the same time, same day as a front desk in a hotel. I used to live in a hotel. So I was oh. working for 16 hours a allow day. Me, allow me, uh, sorry, allow me to much. ask you, uh, yeah. you mentioned the traveling yeah and at the same time i was uh like i was on instagram and i saw your profile it's from where i said yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so He's like so what's good. the story behind uh, <laughs> yeah. this name what's I, the story behind from uh it's just like I actually it's human beings through my eyes so mm -hmm. i just like catch people like uh, i took picture or like or before like an hour now i'm taking picture for people how i see these people you know mm -hmm. so uh, okay. it's um, it's black and white and um, uh, mostly like this is how is life you know it's either black or white i i don't know if it's true or not but like um i don't know it's just like people through my eyes so how i see people that yeah, was yeah but at uh, the same time like you don't post anything like about you i and did you tell stories now hold on i did before but for privacy reason i okay. yeah i took my photos mm -hmm. though i have my facebook in public i have my snapchat in public but, but like wait. instagram was like let me ask you a question like for a person like who's sex, who sexist in his life he always has or she always has uh, a model in her life like uh, who's your model do you have a model, Role model. or like some Are kind of a hero you know mom, we all dad, have some kind of mentor dad, hero it. someone we're looking uh, forward to mom dad that's it uh, looking yeah, at her face expression it looks yeah. like she looks up to herself yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> maybe maybe it's just like i did everything by myself so i really appreciate some people that, that they open their arms or they give me the chance to like do whatever I want, you know, mm -hmm. or like they give me the chance to, oh, for example, I feel, I feel the same way. Yeah, but like <laughs> I did everything by myself, so I really appreciate what people did for me. It's it's not um I, I like I'm, I'm ignoring what they did for me, mm -hmm. but no, it's my work. This is why I was like whenever people say anything, it was like it's my work. I will never even let anyone take that kind yeah, you of worked hard effort. And that's no, a did. great. So, that's a great. At the yeah. same time, like mm -hmm. we all have some kind of obstacle. Sometimes yeah. like they're personal and like the world doesn't even uh, see it. So like, do you have anything? It, it's you all about mention? how you think, you know? Mm -hmm. It's all about how you think if, if, as if it's obstacle or not. I mean like, okay, I'm now, I've, I have like 10 years plus experience, uh -huh. but yeah. if you think about it, like now every, every, like people look at your experience or life as in general, you know? Oh my God, yeah, she has three masters. Oh my God, she traveled the world. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, but, but they like, don't even know how much- How much you struggled. I struggled or how many times I got rejected, course, you know? Yeah. Then I met a lot of your students and okay. all of them, yeah. they love you. And they always tell us like, you have a lot of yeah. conversation with, yeah, with them and discussions yeah, and <laughs> you're so open with them. Like, tell yeah. us more about this chemistry with your students. It just. I don't know, it's not about age actually, it just, uh, so like after I finished, I would say like, just to know like where I got this experience from, um, I came here as I said, and then I worked actually for right to education, so they hired me here at the university for a year. Then I left for Fulbright, 
and this the, at this point Fulbright, 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 uh, uh, Fulbright language teaching assistant okay. so I used mm. to teach Arabic and at the same time taking courses which I recommend everyone to take that oh. uh, this uh, kind of um, uh, fellowship or scholarship because the problem is like people unfortunately they don't believe in that kind of certificate because it just for a year and you don't get a master out of it and we people here we love certificates we love this kind of whatever Quantity. paper Quantity. you know <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. it's about the quality then so uh, I came back actually here worked for like six months maybe then I applied for a uh, master's in US uh, the one of the obstacles that I had is my GPA actually mm -hmm. so my GPA was um, uh, like not that good and unfortunately so uh, what I understand from the rumors that I haven't heard I like uh -huh. it's like legendary but how many BA and MA three three yeah I have two from you yeah so I applied for that the one Syracuse first of all my dad always um, <laughs> he used to tell me think big if you want to think think big and my dad I know it's maybe something um, weird but he always say start big People say like, yeah, it's Start like- Start big, the, you stay big. And, and exactly. And mm. people think that, you know, you have to go through the first step, second step. No, no, it's no. not like that. So what I did is, this is what I do actually. And this is, you can take an advice out of this, uh, that I, okay, what I want to do in my life, actually I want to do PR, I want to do IR, you know, then I looked at, or diplomacies, then I went- and You did to, them all. Yes. Yeah. But like, it was, it was, oh my God. It was a good karma. Like dreaming wild, not the, not no, only. It's, it's and the head good. and shoulders, three in one. <laughs> three in one, you know. But just like, so I, I looked online. I was like, I, this is what I wrote, I swear to God. Like, top schools for public diplomacy. And I got Syracuse number one, then Harvard, then these kinds of schools. And I was like, okay, I'm going to Syracuse, that's it. And I applied the first time I was in waiting list. So that program, it was like, wallahi, modeling for me, you know. So I, or forming like, for me, it's like, two masters at the same time, for one in public relations and one international. I was like, this is what I want, exactly. So I, I did that, I got accepted, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. And between actually this kind of um, uh, two masters, I, I needed or I had to do an internship or training, yeah, as you can yeah, call it. Of course. Actually, to ask you a question. Yeah, yeah uh, sure. So basically, you learned a lot from uh, inside the classroom. But what... Yes, only classroom. No, but like, what if, from, like, what did you learn, let's say, life lessons or some kind of experience you'd love to share? Like, you know, sometimes we learn a lot from outside classrooms. Just work for yourself. No one will even, even, even uh, benefit you in anything, you know? Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm so, not, I'm not, I'm optimistic person. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, just optimistic. like, I want to be... Um, how we say? Um, yeah, it's it's really great to meet you again. Yeah. Uh, actually, this is my first time meeting you. Yeah. It's an honor actually for us to meet you. And of course, we will miss you because I heard some gossips that you're moving. I'm moving. I'm yes. leaving. <laughs> Thursday was my last day at school. Actually, as wow. a PR. It's funny because I started at that department as a volunteer and now I'm the head of the department. Wow, that's yeah. an influencing story. Thank you, Hadil. Thank you uh, like for coming here. It's an honor You're actually to meet you. Thank you and, for uh, having me. I think you, you want to say something. Yeah, like actually before we uh, end our episode for tonight, I'd like to invite you to like uh, our Facebook page, uh, NBC Journal. Also uh, to visit us on uh, our website, nn.ps, for uh, more details. And, uh, and thank you for watching and see you next Tuesday. Mm -hmm.